an unknown fighter from the provinces of the southern Philippines. Here, his dedication and passion would be put to the ultimate test. Without a single cent in his pocket, Manny had to live in the L&M gym downtown. He actually slept inside the ring, the same ring where fighters would spar, where fighters would leave their sweat and blood, and Manny would sleep inside his ring because he had nowhere else to go. He had no blankets, he had no pillows, but that was where he slept. It was a crummy little place in a little back street in Manila, in a sort of a godforsaken area. But that was the kind of surrounding that brought the best out of him. You know, filth, grime, dirt, blood, sweat, and tears at times. When Manny eventually became a world champion, he never forgot his humble beginnings. He bought the Elden Gym several years later, and he has now built dormitories for fighters because he felt that when he was training in that gym, there were no facilities for fighters to sleep in. And many of these fighters were coming from all, all over the Philippines to train in this very fabled gym. Kala ko magbuksing kami nun. Pinatrabaho kami nun, kaya doon kami nakahiwalay. Pitong buwan, wala kaming laban doon. Nagpadala siya palagi siya magsulat. Sabi niya, Mang Suri, ah, hindi pa ako nakapadala ng pera sa iyo kasi wala pa ako mag-regular boxer dito. Nag, uh, nagtrabaho ako, nag, ano ko, ng kalawang sa mga bakal daw. Iskit na kalawang. A window of opportunity opened for Manny Pacquiao when he caught the eyes of the gym's owner, Rod Nazario, and the producers of the national boxing show called Blow by Blow. It was the show that would make Manny a star. On the 22nd of January, 1995, Manny Pacquiao finally made his professional boxing debut on television. He was only 16. Sabi niya, Ma, manood kayo sa Blue by Blue. Punta ka na sa Alulin doon sa, ano, sa studio. Yung lahat ng mga tao sa likod, sabi niya, sino ko itong babae? Sumigaw, sumi, sumigaw, palagi sigaw. Ala, mira na, lakasan mo. Kaliwa kanan, kaliwa kanan na. Sabi niya, huwag kayong mag-alala pag makita mo ako natamaan, hindi masakit. Even as a new fighter, Manny began to catch the attention of boxing fans. Well, Manny Pacquiao, when he was 15, 16 years old, starting his professional boxing career, was already very charismatic. Um, the thing that made, that made Manny such a popular figure in the ring was his exciting style. He was very explosive, he brought a lot of fireworks in the ring, um, his, uh, his charisma was just overpowering. Every time Manny stepped inside that ring, the fans could expect a wonderful victory or a glorious defeat uh, either way. I never thought he was going to be a world champion when I saw him on Blow by Blow. But he had two things going for him. One, his courage was indomitable. The other was his power. But his style was terrible. He just threw punches, he just came at you, and he didn't have the finesse that was necessary to become a world champion. He went after his opponents from the opening bell, non-stop. That's why the fans liked him. Uh, not because he was a great boxer, but because he was a fighter. For the first time in his life, Manny was earning real money, enough to keep his family back home going. He had arrived. Sabi niya, ma'am, maliit pa ang, ano, maliit pa ang premium ko kasi hindi pa tayo champion. Kunti lang to. Sige, okay lang, basta makapaaral kayo sa kapatid mo. Nonetheless, Manny's early career had its share of setbacks. You know, all this adulation that he got as a young fighter must have gotten into his head because in one of his early fights, he went up against a fighter, a journeyman named Rusty Cotto de Campo. Manny was not prepared to take that fight. He weighed in, he was over the limit. He was penalized for it. He had to wear big ounce gloves to be able to lessen the impact of his blows because he was going to come in to fight Torre Campo at a much heavier weight. And what happened in the fight, of course, was history. The heavier gloves handicapped Manny's punching power, and he was knocked out for the first time. He was getting a little cocky at that time because everybody was adoring him, so he took chances got one good blow and he was out. It's over. Cannot get up on time. Over. It's over. Losing to Torre Campo had a profound impact on Manny, who was now forced to face reality. Oh, 
Sabi niya, uh, ma-experience lang to. Pa ano, hindi man lahat nga panalo ang tanggapin natin. May talo, may panalo. Sabi niya. But he will learn from this. He will learn from this. He told Rod Nazario, who is his business manager at that time, I want you to get me the toughest Filipino in this weight division in a 10-round fight. And Rod Nazario said, you just got knocked out. You want the toughest guy next? And he said, yes. And he fought the toughest guy at that time and beat him. That was the first indication to me that this guy had something in him that we were all looking for. After three years as a pro and with 23 wins under his belt, Manny got his first title shot in Thailand against the WBC flyweight champion Chachai Sasakul. I covered that fight at ringside. This fight was held in a makeshift arena um, near a public market. Manny was clearly the underdog. For seven rounds, the more experienced Thai champion gave Manny a boxing lesson. Pacquiao thought that the only way that he could reverse the tide was to knock out his opponent. He started to attack Chachai Sasakul's body, and slowly Sasakul's guard went down by opening up his face. Manny Pacquiao exploded. Sasakul went down like a sack of potatoes, and he was counted out. Sasakul was crying because he wanted to get up, but his legs wouldn't allow it. Manny Pacquiao became the new WBC flyweight champion. The people of the Philippines celebrated. They now had a new champion, Manny Pacquiao. Little did Manny realize that it was just a sign of greater things to come. Masaya ko at uh, natupad yung pangarap ko na mag, mag champion, makakuha ng belt sa boxing. After that, nangarap ulit ako ng, na maging makilala sa, hindi lang sa Pilipinas, kundi sa ibang lugar. 1998 was a big year for Manny for another reason as well. After just seven months of courtship, he married Geraldine Jinky Hamora. He was 19 and she was only 18. And by 2008, they had four kids, Jimwell, Michael, Princess, and Queenie. In 1999, unexpected disaster struck as Manny prepared to defend his flyweight crown against Thailand's Medgoan Singsarat. As a teenager, Manny was so undernourished that he had to stuff coins into his shoes just to make the fighting weight. But now, he had a new problem. His body had developed so much that he no longer could hold his weight down to 112 pounds, which is the limit for the flyweight division. So he was stripped of the championship on the scales when he couldn't make the weight. But he went through with the fight because he wouldn't be able to get his purse if he didn't step into the ring. In attempting to make the weight, Manny was dehydrated. The undefeated Medguin knocked a listless Pacquiao out in just three rounds. After the fight, Manny, who was still growing at 21, took on a new weight division that was 10 pounds heavier. He regained his luster by becoming the regional super bantamweight champion at 122 pounds. But by now, Manny and his team were eager to find success in America. Manny had run out of opposition in Asia. So his business manager, Rod Nazario, said, well, Manny, let's go over to the States and find out whether you could hook up with a trainer, whether that trainer might be able to give you opportunities to fight for major fights. So this was in 2001, and Manny Pacquiao first landed in San Francisco. I remember Manny came into the States with his hair bleached blonde. I guess he just wanted to be different, or maybe he realized that now that he was in the States, maybe he wanted to be like an American too. But that's how he is. He's never scared of trying different new things. Despite being a champion in Asia, though, Manny's arrival in America was like starting over. Rod Nazario had a difficult time finding a promoter who was willing to risk an investment in Manny Pacquiao. And I remember Manny went from one gym in San Francisco to another looking for a home where a trainer could spend some time with him. Nobody wanted to touch him until his business manager, Rod Nazario, found out that there were two Filipino fighters training at the Wild Card Gym in Los Angeles. The Wild Card Gym in Hollywood was owned by Freddie Roach. 
Roach had made a name for himself training the likes of Mickey Rourke and other champions, and taking on Manny would change both their lives. When Manny walked into to the wildcard gym, Freddie didn't even know who Manny Pacquiao was. Here's this kid from the Philippines who had won some titles over in Asia, but Freddie really had no idea who this guy was. Then they took him to work with Freddie on the punch mitts. And after maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, Freddie Roach said, this kid can hit. This kid's gonna be a champion. That was it, that sealed the deal. And so the most powerful partnership in boxing was born. It would prove to be just the lift that Manny needed to transform himself from just another boxer into the world's greatest fighter. Pacquiao's arrival in the U.S. in 2001 signaled a new chapter in his career. Over the next decade, he would become the world's greatest fighter, winning an unprecedented nine world titles in seven weight divisions, a feat that no one would have thought possible without the help of one man, Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach is a very astute man. He's a great trainer. He can see talent where others may not see the talent. And he realized that two things Pacquiao had going for him, his speed and his power. It's really one of the greatest combinations in boxing history. Not long after meeting Roach in 2001, Pacquiao got his first break in the American arena. IBF champion Lalojo Nolo Ledwaba from South Africa was scheduled to defend his super bantamweight title, but his opponent dropped out. It was two weeks notice. They asked Manny Pacquiao, do you want to fight? I said, yes, I'm ready. And they said, you trained only two weeks. No, but I'm ready. Manny entered the ring as the underdog, but already pictured himself as the victor. His business manager, Rod Nazario, asked him one thing. The first opportunity, break Ledwaba's nose. And Manny said, okay, manager, I'll see what I can do. True enough, within the first minute of the fight, Manny bloodied Ledwaba's nose. Nobody was expecting too much, and uh, lo and behold, he was sensational. He scored a six-round knockout, and uh, suddenly was a, a player because of that surprising, spectacular performance. So that was really what uh, brought into the attention of people in this country. Back home, Manny's championship victories were celebrated with hometown parades and invitations to the Malacanang Palace by President Gloria Arroyo. In spite of his tough reputation, Manny's fighting skills were still developing. For all his power, he was still a one-handed fighter who relied on his left hook to knock his opponents out. Under the tutelage of Freddie Roach, the transformation of Manny Pacquiao was about to begin. Freddie Roach said, this boy has to be repackaged. Keep that big punch. The most important thing was, Freddie taught Manny how to fight intelligently. This was something that was very new to Manny. Roach is a cerebral boxing mind. When you look at Pacquiao's incredible athletic ability combined with that boxing intelligence, then that's a lethal combination. More than just being a coach, however, Roach gradually became the father figure that Manny never had. His relationship with Pacquiao is the most unusual relationship between a fighter and a trainer. He calls him son. Manny's father left his family when Manny was not even in his teens. So all his life, Manny has been looking really for a father figure, a father image. And he saw it in Freddie Roach. Manny is from an incredibly poor background. So is Freddie. And they just had that language of boxing. They had a language of poverty. He was a man who could teach Manny the way to maturity. Despite suffering from Parkinson's disease, Roach has managed to train no less than 25 world champions. But Manny remains his star pupil. Manny's unbelievable. He makes me look good. He's the best fighter in the world, and that's why 
He makes me the best trainer in the world. Ang relasyon naman namin ni Fred Roach is uh, talagang teamwork kami. Uh, hindi kami nagkakailangan sa isa't isa dahil matagal na kaming magkasama. At uh, sa, sa training, lagi kaming nagkakasundo. In 2003, Manny's deadliest test arrived in the form of three-time world champion Marco Antonio Barrera. Having put on muscle yet again, Manny would now fight for the ring's featherweight title. Barrera was uh, considered one of the very best fighters in the world. Manny was something of an upstart, uh, just starting to rise. And uh, the expectation was that Barrera would be just too much for him. Nobody gave Pacquiao a chance. Everybody, including Filipino, said Barrera was too big, too strong, too good for Pacquiao. But Pacquiao just smiled and said, you see, we will see. Instead, the fight turned out to be Pacquiao's defining moment. He beat the hell out of Marco Antonio Barrera for 11 rounds until Barrera's brother jumped into the ring, embraced him, and, and, and stopped the fight. Now a three-time world champion in three different weight classes, Manny's confidence and size continued to grow. But the competition was only getting tougher. In 2005, Manny, now fighting as a 130-pound lightweight, squared off against Mexican legend Eric Morales. Things took a nasty turn. During the match, a headbutt for Morales opened up a bloody cut on Manny's brow. With blood hampering his vision, Manny had to hold on as a feisty Morales took the 12-round decision. It was only Manny's third loss in over 40 fights. Both fighters were so popular that two rematches were signed. And in typical fashion, Manny rose to the occasion and knocked Morales out, not once, but twice. I thought Manny Pacquiao, at that time, delivered a very strong statement that he was for real, and that he was on the way to greater things. In spite of having Freddie Roach and a capable team on his side, Manny found success catching up with him. His career had been managed by a few promoters since his arrival. Now that he was a hot property, everyone wanted a piece of the Pac-Man. Boxer Oscar De La Hoya was Manny's idol and a legend in his own right. But a contractual mix-up arose when Manny signed up with Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions Company while still being bound to Bob Arum of Top Rank Boxing. In the controversy, Manny ended up staying with Top Rank, a decision that would cost De La Hoya's company tens of millions of dollars in lost revenue. De La Hoya, of course, never forgave him for that. But in the end, he realized there was nothing very much he could do. And that's how it stood. Not surprisingly, amid his growing stature, Manny's private life came under scrutiny from the Filipino press. It was one area of his life where he was not untouchable. In 2006, reports emerged of a paternity suit from a waitress. And over the years, Manny and his family would endure reports linking him to various actresses and other women. The allegations, however, failed to dent his popularity. Back in the ring, it was business as usual as Manny continued to steamroll his opponents. His ruthless and relentless destruction of the top Latin American fighters earned him the title, the Mexicutioner. At home, he was known more affectionately as the Pac-Man, which is also the name of his Jack Russell Terrier, who trains with him. Very few athletes that have achieved the great success and fame that Manny Pacquiao has can retain that innocent charm, boyish smile, the, the wild hair flying as he fights. He says the same thing after every fight. I hope you enjoyed the show and uh, I mean nothing personal, doing my job in the ring. I hope you everybody happy. And that's very rare that you hear athletes today actually caring about the audience. When Manny Pacquiao fights, everything stops. The streets are deserted. Uh, everybody is in front of a television set. Crime is almost zero. The Muslim rebels stop uh, fighting. And that whole day is, is a day of bliss in the Philippines. 
When 2008 rolled around, Manny Pacquiao found himself with a new challenge. He would face off with his boxing idol, Oscar De La Hoya, in what promoters called the dream match. The fight with Oscar De La Hoya really did cement his international fame, because Oscar De La Hoya is an icon. Everybody knows who Oscar De La Hoya is. An Olympic and eight-time world champion, Oscar was considered even more popular than Pacquiao by the public, and a dangerous opponent for Manny. De La Hoya was so much bigger than, than Pacquiao, and people thought it was, it, was a, it was a terrible mismatch. The controversy that had erupted over Manny's previous management contract, however, was still lingering in everyone's mind. Now, the thing about that fight was very special. Oscar De La Hoya said, this is personal. I am going to knock him out. Ang pinakapaborito kong fight is uh, yung De La Hoya fight kasi first time ko nag-move up to 147 pounds. Ano yun, pinakamalaking timbang na nilaban. Oscar, a natural middleweight, had to drop nearly 20 pounds himself to meet Manny at the welterweight level. When Manny finally stepped into the ring, however, he trumped the odds one more time. Pacquiao made Oscar look old over, overnight. The fight lasted eight rounds before De La Hoya threw in the towel. Manny gave Oscar such a terrible and prolonged beating that Oscar retired immediately afterward. In spite of the beating, Manny, as ever, was gracious in victory. Manny Pacquiao went across, embraced him and said, you are still my idol. Yes, um, idol ko siya, tapos nakalaban ko, proud naman ako, malaking karangalan sa akin. In defeating De La Hoya, Pacquiao now looked invincible, going from strength to strength. He would win world titles in seven different weight divisions by 2009, an unmatched feat by any fighter past or present. Manny has been able to grow in size, move up and win titles in various uh, divisions, but he can still knock him out. To maintain the punch as you move up and fight larger and larger men is very unusual. Uh, and I, I think it's one of the greatest attributes he has. I think Manny Pacquiao is very much like a Roberto Duran. He's got a little of everyone, Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, and he puts that together to make Manny Pacquiao. He's a very different kind of fighter and a very different kind of human being. Pacquiao's superhuman ability to conquer one division after another without losing speed or power has astounded the world. To achieve this, the Pac-Man's training and conditioning program has become a precise science. He's like a racehorse with blinkers. He concentrates only on one thing, the fight ahead of him. Hailed as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter of his time, Manny's reputation in boxing history was sealed. But as stardom beckoned, would success change Manny the humble fighter? From living in a shack, to owning swanky homes in the Philippines and L.A., Manny's transformation from street fighter to star has been stunning. Manny Pacquiao has really brought boxing back into mainstream interest. In the last several years, he's become sort of a global personality. I mean, here's a guy who is covered in Time magazine, ESPN, and Sports Illustrated, and, and the New York Times. The editor of the New York Times was really not that interested in boxing, and then Pacquiao came along, and he really brought an interest to boxing. People that don't know boxing, don't follow boxing, they've heard of Manny Pacquiao. Americans, they love the rats of it. I mean, they love to see a poor boy from nowhere come up to the top rungs of any sporting profession. Now he's being managed by multi-millionaire financiers and promoters. He's surrounded by hordes of people, his followers, his disciples. The first time I met Manny was in the Philippines a number of years ago. The capper was that I got to present the championship belt to Pacquiao at the palace. It made me realize how special Manny was to the Filipino people. Well, Manny Pacquiao was a symbol of hope for every Filipino from any walk of life. 
Um, Nani Pacquiao gives the inspiration, the confidence, and the faith for the small man to believe in himself, to feel that if Nani Pacquiao can go from rags to riches, hey, so can I. In the year 2009, Manny's celebrity continued to grow. Despite being quiet and unassuming on the surface, he made a guest appearance on popular American talk show, Jimmy Kimmel Live. He was also invited to throw the ceremonial opening pitch for the San Francisco Giants San Diego Padres baseball game that same year. His ability to cross over into other areas of entertainment he comes off as this charming, unassuming, cool little dude. I went to one of his uh, singing shows after a fight in Las Vegas. Nobody's trying to kid themselves and think that, you know, Manny is a fantastic singer, but he's a lot of fun. Reach for the sky. So it's no surprise that Manny has starred in a few movies, including Wapak Man, a superhero flick that saw Manny beating up the bad guys. As an actor, he's terrible. And I don't think he's going to make any more movies because every movie he has made has been a flop. To be honest with you, and I don't know why he makes it, but, you know, he, he likes the attention. I went once to watch him make a movie. It was in a slum area, but he enjoyed it because everybody came to see Manny Pacquiao, and he thrives on that. Despite Manny's less-than-stellar movie career, Sylvester Stallone has been reportedly keen to get Manny on Hollywood's big screen. To get to know Manny Pacquiao, you really have to go through a lot of different layers. He owns a mansion in Beverly Hills, but he likes to have people around him, so he stays at this condo during training camp. I think the last fight were 14 different guys. It's sort of a frat house atmosphere. At the beginning of the training camp, they often go and play poker at the, at the casinos, and they play darts, they sing karaoke. Whoever is sort of in favor that day gets to sleep at the foot of his bed, and there are guys sleeping all over the place, because there's 14 guys in a condo. I think he kind of has a good time with it. it. Seems like some of the entourage guys sort of take it seriously. Manny's success has also rubbed off on his friends and family members. Manny's best pal, Boo Boy Fernandez, who Manny grew up with, is now his trainer. Manny's mother, Dionysia, now lives in her own mansion and has become a TV star in her own right. While wife, Jinky, now enjoys a status that few could have dreamed of. Manny Pacquiao is one of the richest athletes on the illustrious Forbes list. As a young boy, Manny sold bread on the streets just to survive. But today, the Pacquiao empire hires over 200 employees across various enterprises. From cafes and bars to boutiques and basketball teams, and even gas stations, Manny's business ventures range far and wide. For both fans and those close to him, it's gratifying that Manny hasn't succumbed to the trappings of fame and fortune. At least, not for now. Si Manny, walang pagbabago sa ugali. Ang kabuhayan lang nagbago, kaya di na mahirap ngayon. When you come from the depths of poverty and reach the level that Manny Pacquiao has in terms of fame and fortune, you tend to get a distorted vision of the world and of your own importance. But thankfully and mercifully, Manny Pacquiao hasn't changed that much despite all of these things. And he's won one world title after another, but he's still the same ordinary guy. And the word you hear always is humble. Filipinos love his humility. During the Mass, during the offering of the prayers, Manny speaks out. Lord, never have I heard him say, Lord, give me this victory over my opponent. All he asks is that the Lord protect him and his opponent from suffering any serious harm in the ring. And he also says, Lord, I also pray 
that the people of the Philippines will be happy after this fight. Now, of course, the people of the Philippines won't be happy if he loses. So in a way, he's also asking for divine intervention for a victory. Ako hindi ko na minisip yun na tinatawag nila kong hero. Basta ang inisip ko is at least nakapagbigay ako ng inspirasyon sa kanila. Makakuha man lang sila ng aral na kung wala ang Panginoon, walang Manny Pacquiao. Kung wala ang Panginoon, wala kung hindi ako magsaksis sa buhay ko. Manny is a very superstitious person, a very religious person, and a devoted family man. Those are three things that maybe not too many people know about Manny Pacquiao. Before a fight, he goes and stays in this kind of a rundown motel next to the, the wild card boxing gym because it's always brought him good luck. On his way to the airport, all dressed up, he goes to the L&M gym, punches the heavy bag, says a prayer, and then leaves. The only time he didn't do that was the first fight against Eric Morales, and he lost the fight. With an estimated net worth of over 57 million U.S. dollars, the Pac-Man has been called generous to a fault. Some wonder how long it will last. As a person, Manny Pacquiao is very giving. I think he's got a heart that he wants to share with as many people as he can. He'll spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on tickets and flying people over from the Philippines to see his fights. After the Barrera fight, he celebrated his birthday in General Santos City. And then he proudly took me to a room stacked with rice and canned goods and all sorts of things. And I said, what's this for? He said, I'm going to give it to the poor people tomorrow morning. And early morning, there were thousands and thousands of people lining up outside his house. And he was so proud. When I said, Manny, how long are you going to do this? He said to me, until the last person has been given something. Probably eight to 10,000 people benefited from his generosity that very day. Oh, sabi, sabi ko, na control lang. Baka ibigay na ni mong lahat. <laughs> Wala na kayo, sabi niya, mang. Hindi madala natin sa, sa taas. Hinihiram lang natin dito sa mundo. On that note, it seemed almost inevitable that Manny would take his immense goodwill to the next level and take on the biggest challenge of his life. In 2009, Manny Pacquiao added two more championships to his belt, destroying Ricky Hatton in just two rounds for the light welterweight title and knocking out Puerto Rican champion Miguel Cotto for the welterweight title. The Cotto victory marked the first time any boxer had won seven world titles in seven weight classes. It was the biggest fight of the year and grossed $70 million in pay-per-view revenues alone. But there was one more fight that the public wanted. The undefeated Floyd Mayweather, a nine-time world champion himself, was regarded as Pacquiao's greatest threat. In spite of the potential, the fight of the decade did not happen. Floyd Mayweather's camp made a request that Manny Pacquiao take random Olympic-style blood tests. Pacquiao took great offense to this. I think it really hurt Pacquiao in terms of his pride. He's always tried to present himself as a man of integrity. And here was somebody sort of saying that he was a dishonest person, and Pacquiao sued Mayweather, and it was sort of turned into a bad soap opera. In 2010, Manny was named the Fighter of the Decade by the Boxing Writers Association of America. Presenting Manny this award was former heavyweight champ Joe Frazier. I think the history books would be very kind to Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao is a once-in-a-lifetime phenomenon. There's never been anybody like Manny Pacquiao before, and I doubt there ever will be again. I put Manny Pacquiao in my personal top three of, of greatest boxers of all time. I have Sugar Ray Robinson as number one, and then I have Ali, I have him as two, and then I have Pacquiao as, 
as three because he's won seven different titles in seven different weight classes, which is really unheard of. Even before he had reached his peak, Manny had contemplated retirement as early as 2006. His wife and mother had urged him to retire, saying that there was nothing more for him to prove. Manny's convictions, however, told him otherwise. In 2007, he did the unexpected and entered the political arena. Ten years prior to his entering politics, he suddenly just walked in and he told, looked at Rodney and he said, I want to enter public service. And then Rodney Zari looked at him and said, you crazy? Yeah, you're 20 years old, you want to enter politics? And he said, oh boy, yes, I want to. I want to help the poor people, I've seen enough. Sobrang takot ko, sabi ko, kung natakot ako sa boxing mo, lalo na sa politiko, marumi talaga ang politiko, na? Parang napuyat din ako, sa kakaisip sa'yo. Sa akin, um, pangarap ko is makatulong din kasi sa amin maraming mga mahirap at hindi ko, hindi ko matitiis na makita sila na sabi ko, kasi nararamdaman ko yung nararamdaman nila na na pagiging mahirap yung hindi makakain ng tatlong bisis sa isang araw tapos makikita ko ng ganun sabi ko sana may isang may isang leader o politiko na talagang tutulong tutulungan sila ng galing talaga sa puso na tapos puso ang magsiservisyo Despite his best efforts the Pac-Man failed to knock his opponent out up against the incumbent representative in General Santos City Darlene Antonino Custodio Manny was decisively beaten. Although the loss was a setback to Manny's political aspirations, it wasn't the end. As he did throughout his boxing career, he kept his hopes and dreams alive. Boxing compared to politics is different. Boxing is a sport. And siguro, magkapareho lang is yung uh, ambisyon mo na may 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 pangarap ka na ma, ma, makamit. Ako naman sa sa politics is gusto kong magserbisyo sa tao na ipakita sa kanila na ang tamang panggobyerno at uh, ipakita sa kanila na uh, yung hindi lahat ng mga politician is masama ang image, masama ang hangari. Three years later, in 2010, after a passionate campaign, Manny Pacquiao was finally elected to Congress. In his inaugural congressional speech, Manny quoted American poet Robert Frost and Spider-Man and took a major step forward in his life. With my heart in the right place, my work ethic, my discipline, and my commitment to learn from wiser and more experienced people, such as all of you here today, yes, I can be a good congressman. Here's a guy with a sixth grade education who passed his high school equivalency exam but had to take government courses to figure out how he's going to work as a congressman. In the effervescence of my youth, I chose Michael Bapper's famous line, Let's get ready to rumble. You know, I think the jury is still out on Manny Pacquiao as far as being a politician is concerned. But I think he's uh, on the right track by delivering a well-accepted privileged speech. I think shows that he's got the mentality to become a forceful and meaningful politician. I want to remember people that when they come to the day, that Manny Pacquiao is not only a boxer, at isa pang uh, uh, politisya na nagsiservisyo ng totoo at uh, uh, iniidolo nila ako. You know, Congress is a very difficult arena. It's not like a boxing ring. It's a man-to-man -man thing in a boxing ring. Your own talents against somebody else's. This, you're pitching your own acumen against 250 others. Much better educated than him. You know, everybody's always sort of said he couldn't do something, but he's always been able to overcome his station in life. He's a very strategic guy inside the ring and outside the ring, so I wouldn't be surprised if he does a lot in Congress, becomes a senator perhaps someday, and I don't know the political system well enough, but people that do tell me that he could be president someday as well.